I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Hey there, everybody. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, I'm going to do a little news and notes, a little waiver wire review, and of course the Thursday night preview. So let's get to the waiver wire review. Let's see what happened in some of my leagues, certainly some of the world championship leagues. David Moore, 55 bucks. CJ Uzoma, 48 I thought that was a good buy. Um, not too much, not too many big guys in that league. People are rather cheap. Let's see another one here. Uh, who do we have going on here? Jameis Winston was out there, two hundred ninety-nine dollars. Ah, if you need to win, you know you're one and four. You need to win. Jameis Winston might be worth that kind of money. Traycon Smith went for two eighty-four. Baker Mayfield went for one eighty-nine. Kyle Juszczyk went for one hundred two. Uh, those were some of the high ones in that league. I do like the Traquan Smith move. Thought that was uh, a lot of upside there. Uh, it's possible that it could really work for that team. Curtis Samuel in another league went for seventy-eight. Kyle Juszczyk went for 77. Martavis Bryant went for 52. I kind of like Martavis Bryant. I think he's he's in play. It obviously is, looks like the Raiders want to go to him and they want to give an opportunity. I don't trust him as far as I could throw him, but he is getting the opportunity. Traquan Smith went for 237 in another league. Capri Bibbs went for 233. The next bid was zero, and the guy dropped Corey Clement. Oh, my God. You, what was what this guy thinking? His team name is Sharp Baby, but I don't know how sharp he was when you're dropping Corey Clement. Um, maybe this guy did his moves on Monday. That's a big mess right there. Uh, Niles Paul went for 74. Jamal Charles went for 84. Trent Taylor went for 58. Um, eh, not my favorite things going on there. I think I like Niles Paul a little bit, but Jamal Charles at 84. I think that may be a waste of money, especially if T.J. Yeldon stays healthy. If he does, you're not going to see much Jamal Charles. All right, Chaquan Smith in this league went for $322. Josh Reynolds, $126. Uh, Josh Reynolds is interesting to me, mainly because if if Cup or, or Cooks are injured, well, then Josh Reynolds is the guy. Uh, Niles Paul went for $23 in this league. I went and got Dwayne Gallman for $25. Bucks. Who I thought, you know what? He is one Saquon Barkley injury from being relevant. And I got Laquan Treadwell for $17. Who's one Diggs or Thielen injury away from being relevant. So in certain times of the year, like right about now, right? I'm not going to be able to find a guy on the waiver wire I really like. Probably won't. What I can do though is look for the guy behind the guy. And if I can find the guy behind the guy... The guy might turn out to be pretty good. All right, a few more leagues. Wendell Smallwood went for $332. Peyton Barber, $125. I think that's a big old waste of money. Ito Smith, great buy there for $88. Devonta Freeman is injured, and I think Ito Smith is a great play for this week. I got Marcus Scantling Valdez for $76. I'm loving that move. Jushik went for $33 in this league that I'm telling you about. Um, let's look at a couple more leagues here. We've got Traycon Smith, 157. Cameron Meredith, 152. The same team got both guys. So we paid about $309 to have the, the, the same second receiver. Might be worth it. Not a bad idea. Jushik went for 85. Uzoma went for 75. Jamal Charles went for 69. Capri Bibbs went for 45. Josh Reynolds, 41. I mean, those are pretty good buys there in this league. I thought that was... Uh, Pretty pretty good here. Let me do the live Dr. Roto from Vegas League. Donta Foreman, great buy, $157. Traquan Smith, I got him for $115. I got him at a bargain compared to the other leagues. Albert Wilson went for $102. Kyle Juszczyk went for $73. The Texans defense went for $63. I would never pay $63 for a defense. I just won't do it. I'm going to pay $5, $10 bucks. If I get the guy, I get the guy. If not, I don't. So let's do one more league here if I can get to it. I will get to the Invitational. 
Uh, let's see what some of those smart guys did. Wendell Smallwood, $455. Darren Sproles, $125. Chester Rogers, $103. I don't know if I love the Chester Rogers move, but look, uh, if T.Y. Hilton's out, then Chester Rogers is in. John Rozek, very smart player. Josh Adams for $89. Ito Smith went for $67. I think that's great. I love the Chris Ivory for $37 move. I think that is a great move uh, by my friend Andy. Uh, Chad Schrader comes in and gets Capri Bibbs. Rosette comes in and gets Laquan Treadwell. So once again, you're seeing some of the sharpest guys out there doing moves that I'm telling you about. So what are these moves? Why do you pay for Ito Smith? Well, Devonta Freeman's injured. Coleman, you saw Ito Smith get a goal line carry last week when all three guys were healthy. That's a sign. Why did my man Andy go get Chris Ivory? Because there's talk about LaShawn McCoy getting traded. LaShawn McCoy gets traded. Who's going to be the starting running back? Chris Ivory. Why is getting LaCron Treadwell great? Because if Thielen or, or Diggs gets hurt, Treadwell is the next guy up. Why is Capri Bibbs a good buy? Because Adrian Peterson is not healthy. Capri Bibbs is better than Samaj P. Ryan, who stinks. That's a good move. So you're seeing a lot of smart players make a lot of smart moves. And that's why they do well. There's no mystery here, guys. That's what happens. All right, so some news and notes. Devonta Freeman has a foot issue. It's not a long-term issue, but it could be a game or two. So this guy's just a train wreck. If I had him right now, I I'd try to move him. I don't know if I could, but I'd try to move him for sure. Um, Corey Clement, I mentioned him before. I think Clement and Smallwood will get about 55 to 45% of the carries, meaning Clement 55%, Smallwood 45 Clement is the better pass receiver. Clement is the better blocker, and Clement is the better short yardage runner, especially by the goal line. Smallwood will run the football. I say that he probably gets 10 to 15 touches. That's what I'm looking at tonight. Nothing more than that. Uh, Chris Thompson limited in practice. Uh, Doug Baldwin practicing in full. That's a good sign. Marshawn Lynch limited in practice. But hey, you know that it's, we have the narrative play this week. I am loving Marshawn Lynch against the Seahawks, his former team. And if you want to go deeper in the narrative play, what about Alan Hearns going up against um, the Jaguars? If he was ever going to score, maybe this would be the week. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to do a Thursday night preview. So first, let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz, he's an absolute start. I wouldn't start Wentz over Pat Mahomes. I wouldn't start Wentz over Jared Goff, but he's certainly a top seven, top eight play. Clement and Smallwood are good players, but I think they're going to have to throw the ball more. The problem is that the Giants' pass defense has been pretty good. Janoris Jenkins, a very good cover guy. I don't really like Alshon Jeffrey this week. The Giants have struggled with slot receivers, so this could be a Nelson Aguilar week if he can hold on to the football. And of course, I love me some Zach Ertz. Giants have never done well against the tight end. Alec Ogletree has helped, but Zach Ertz is a premier player. I think Wentz to Ertz, Wentz to Ertz, you're going to see that a lot. I do like Dallas Goder. I think he's interesting. I think that he may make a play, especially in the red zone. Two tight end set, I could see that happening. If he scored, I wouldn't be shocked tonight. But I do like Wentz, Clement, Aguilar, Ertz. Those are my guys. For the Giants, I think a lot of this game is going to come down to the Giants offensive line against the Eagles defensive line. Can Derek Barnett get to Eli Manning? Can Brandon Graham get to Eli Manning? If they get to Eli Manning, the Giants are in real trouble. If they can't, if the Giants offensive line holds them, here's the luck. If they can hold them off, Odell Beckham has the greatest matchup in the world against Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills, who stink. So if Eli has time, Beckham is a sensational play. Now, you've got to think that the Eagles are going to double cover Beckham, which makes Sterling Shepard a really good play. Okay, so Shepard and Beckham should be in, in, having very a lot of success tonight. I've got to think Beckham is going to get double covered. Shepard is not a wide receiver two. He's a legitimate wide receiver one. He's a wide receiver two because the Giants have Beckham. But in general, he's a top receiver. So I think these two guys have a good night. The Giants have no tight end tonight. I think Red Ellison's very questionable. And Evan Ingram is out, as you know. Saquon Barkley is the interesting play tonight. The Eagles have been very, very, very staunch against the run. They haven't let up more than 55 yards rushing to anybody this year. I think that changes tonight. 
if the weather is good enough and if Barkley can get traction, he gets a lot of yards after contact. If he can continue getting yards after contact, he can make a big play tonight against the Eagles. I don't think the Eagles are going to give him a lot. They won't, but he should. He, look, remember the game against the Jacksonville Jaguars? They shut him down except for one big play. That's what you're looking for for Barkley every week. One big play, and I think you get it tonight. I do. I think you get it tonight. I don't love Eli Manning because at the end of the day, if you're asking me, do I think the Eagles' defensive line is better than the Giants' offensive line? I think the answer to that question is yes. That being said, the Giants always play well against the Eagles. It's a division rivalry. They never want to lose this game. So there's a lot to be said for this game. It should be a fun, exciting, open game, and I'm looking forward to watching it. I am. All right. What else am I looking forward to? I'm looking forward to winning some money in DFS. How am I going to do that? By going to scoutdfs.com. Check out our optimizer. Check out our articles. And also check out my video with Willie Walls. We do it every Friday night. And hopefully we're giving you information that you can use to help you win a lot of money in DFS. Also, what I want you to do is check out scoutfantasysports.com. That's scoutfantasysports.com. You've got me. You've got Sean Childs. You've got Adam Ronis. We're answering questions, we're writing articles, we're giving you rankings. We're, we're doing everything we possibly can to help you win your fantasy football leagues. We really, really are. But right now it's time. Wait, before I do that, tomorrow on Friday, just so you know, Friday night from 7 to 8, I'm on with Adam Ronas at Fantasy Sports Radio. We do a Friday night show together. And then late on Friday night, I will have the DFS video up. Willie and I do that. So Friday is a very busy day to help you get prepared to win your leagues. But let's try this again. Right now, it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Enjoy tonight's game. This is Dr. O saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!